and welcome to a real conversation between two native English speakers. I'm Adam Navis, and with me today is Liz Wade. Hello, Liz. Hi, Adam. As always. As with you. always, yes. <laughs> as always. Today, we're going to talk about a program called 10 Ways to Fight Hate Pressure Leaders. This is part of a series. I'm trying to remember what number in the series it this is. This is number seven. Number seven. If you have not checked out that program, make sure you click the link in the description and uh, you can check out the full series. We have a playlist on YouTube. Um, yeah. So you could listen to programs one through seven. Uh, and we also have the advanced playlist Check as out well. the advanced playlist as well. Of course, like and subscribe to this and if you want to receive scripts to our weekly programs via email, go to our website, spotlightenglish.com, click on the subscribe, scripts by email, subscribe by email, it's up yeah, at the top. Scripts, scripts uh, by email. People have been signing up for that and really enjoying it. And um, Well, if you think about it, it's just, you know, you don't even need to think about when are you going to practice or what are you going to practice? You just get the script in your email and then there's a link to the audio right there. Yep. You just open that email and everything you need to practice English every week is right there. Yes. We like to call it the cheapest English lessons you're going to get for just $5 a month. Um, yeah. You usually get four, depending on how many weeks there are, maybe even five uh, mm -hmm. scripts every month. And they're yours to keep forever. So check that out yeah. if that's interesting you. Uh, Liz. Yes. 10 ways to fight hate. Why don't you talk about the overall series and then we'll talk about, uh, talk briefly about that. Why, why that, why we love this series and then yes. what this program is about. Okay. So I will say we have been running this series um, almost all year, I think. And, um, you know, when you think about 10 ways to fight hate, I've always th said this about this program is, you know, you think, well, I'm just going to do this in my life and it will be a way to fight against hate I meet in my everyday life or like people who are around me, I can, you know, stand up against hate. Um, but what I really love about this series is that it does break it down so it makes it smaller parts into 10 different ways that like people can take steps to stop hate either in their own lives, in their own minds, in their own communities or in the world. And um, you can uh, you can kind of pick and choose, right? So some of us are better at other things and mm -hmm. um, like even if you're not good at everything, I think these programs are really great at giving concrete steps, like actual steps you can use in your life. So for example, in the, I think it's number three or four, um, which is 10 ways to fight hate, speak up. Right. Um, you, we go through some situations you might be in and some ways that if somebody says a racist joke or um, something racist, that there are, there are scripts, there are things that, that you can practice to right. say to yourself, to the other person um, to right, be, you can prepare yourself. Yeah, you can. Exactly. You prepare yourself to stop hate. And so this program is about pressuring your leaders and it talks about how important it is for community leaders, world leaders, um, any sort of leaders, community leaders, mm -hmm. uh, leaders in your family or whatever. Um, that those leaders have a stronger voice than um, maybe others, right? right? So those people really need to be a, all I can think of is like beacon of light, right? Yeah. They need to be leading people a, away from hate and right. against hate and speaking against hate. And as a person uh, who that leader represents, you have a voice to that leader to pressure them into making better choices, into speaking against hate, into acting against hate. Mm -hmm. And so that's what this program goes into, like why it's important for you to do that and how you can do that in your community. Yeah. I really, when I was reading, rereading this program in order to talk about it with you, 
Mm -hmm. I really thought about um, the different um, kinds of leaders and the different, you know, people watching this are going to be from all around the world. So you right, might have right. different types of government leaders, um, different systems uh, mm -hmm. locally. You might even be a leader in your community and be watching this. So I think it's interesting. It will be interesting. And if you ha can let us know in the comments below about when you listen to this program, if you thought, oh, this, this one... Because we give several things people can do. There might yeah. be one that, that you think that doesn't work because maybe you're in a different system of government. You know, you might right. have a you might live under a king or a queen and yeah. they don't care about you or some kind of dictatorship. Um so it it is we, we I have to recognize that that there are different systems at play. Um Mm -hmm. And different leaders are going to be more or less responsive. Um, but let's just assume moving forward, like that you feel like you can do something. Well, what yeah, I think you can do something. I mean, it depends on what level of leadership you're you're talking about, mm -hmm. right? Like if we're talking about maybe a family leader or a community mm -hmm. leader, you might have a say in that. Um, right. If we're talking about like, what can I do to pressure the president or my governor of my state that I, I feel like I have different levels of influence there. True. But if I can, if I can make a difference on my local leadership level, and then many people are also making differences on their local leadership level, those local leaders can pressure higher up leaders and those higher up leaders can pressure leaders that are at the top. And I think, in that way, you can still have a little bit of a... Yeah. Um, I think that's incident. a good point, Liz. I think that you can't not do anything because you can't do everything, right? Like right. maybe you won't be able to influence the top leader of your country, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try to influence or... Um, help support let's let's maybe maybe influence is is the like there might be leaders who want to speak out against hate but like right. the program says it's sometimes hard they're yeah if they're an elected official they're worried about being keeping their job and they need to know that they're supported by the people they're serving right and well and another thing about uh about those kind of leaders like elected leaders um I thought was really interesting in the program is that, and we don't often think about this, is that when a leader doesn't say something about hate, mm -hmm. they're actually still sending a message. Right. So if there is, um, if there are a group of hate incidents in a community and a community leader says something against hate, like we need this hate to stop and, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Um, they're speaking a message against hate. But mm. if there is the same group of, of incidents happening and, you know, people are saying, why aren't you speaking out about this? And your community leader never says anything about it. That's still sending a message. And that message could be that those hate incidents don't matter to that leader right. or that they approve of those hate incidents. You know, so just being quiet, like just not saying anything as a leader is also sending a message um, yeah. just the same as saying something. So which is, really, which I, is why, opinion, I think, you know, which is why we, we've made this hate. series, right? Because what? what, which is why we've made this series, because yes, exactly. we have for everybody who's watching this, we have an opportunity. You, we, you have given us a few minutes of your time mm -hmm. to hear what we have to say. And yes, you want to learn English and practice your English. But we also said, you know what? There's a lot of hate in the world. We are going to yeah. do a whole series about it because here at Spotlight, we are going to fight hate in the small mm -hmm. way or big way, whatever way we can. Yeah. And so maybe somebody watching this will, will say, well, I don't have a YouTube channel. I'm not the president of a country. But you're going to have some way in which you're a leader, even if it's I think to this one person. Is... Oh, go ahead. I was just saying, even if, you, even if it's influencing one person. Right. Well, I was going to say that I think this is a good a good time to talk about the example in this program, hmm. actually, that um, that it 
it begins with, and it's these students and former students of a school in Texas and Alabama as well, um, where the school was named after a U.S. Civil War general right. um, who led the the South in a basically, I mean, this it's as every war is, it is more complicated than this. But essentially, the South wanted to keep slaves and the North wanted to stop slavery. So um, the the general Robert E. Lee is often portrayed as a hero in the South, even though the South lost and and things like that. Um, but so many schools are named after him and these students and former students got together and they decided to ask about changing their, right. changing the name of their school. Uh, they asked the school board to do this. These are local school leaders, um, who make decisions about the school. And, um, I think that's great for a couple of reasons, right? Um, you think, first of all, it's these students, these young people who, you know, you might think, oh, they're young, they don't have a lot of experience, or they don't have a voice. No, they do have a voice. Mm -hmm. Like, and especially when they work together to make sure this voice is heard, um, they made a difference there. Yeah. Uh, spoiler, they <laughs> did change the name of the school. Yeah. <laughs> um, and well, the other thing is that, like, we can take, like, um, you can make a difference even if it's just as simple as a name change, mm -hmm. not honoring that person who actually maybe isn't worthy of honor. Right. Well, and I think, I mean, I don't know everything that the students had to do, but one of the things I think this program does really well is talks about one of the tasks is educating leaders. Like just because someone's in a, yeah. a position of leadership does not mean they know everything, that they even know enough to right. make a decision. If you assume that people are trying to do the best job they can, but maybe don't know the history or the mm -hmm. full impact of their decision. Or it, how someone else thinks about it. How someone else thinks about it. Like to go into that situation, not being argumentative and angry, but saying, hey, let me talk to you. I want to educate you on my perspective and being respectful. I think that's actually a more effective approach. Um, and it was a good, in our world, you don't want to fight hate with more hate, right? If you go in saying, oh, this person's a bad leader. Yeah, I wanna, you're wrong you know. because blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Yeah. And so I really like that part of this program saying, oh, it's about educating. And, and I think that's true. Mm -hmm. um, not just with leaders, but with everybody we encounter. And that's it's hard to do because not everybody wants to learn more or grow more. Right. Um, we're already to, to listen. Yeah. So one of the things I also love about this story is that um, one of the people, one of the former students involved in changing this name of the school mm -hmm. um, is a, a woman named Marche Johnson. Mm-hmm. And she participated in this campaign to change the name of the school. But also then, uh, I mean, I don't know what order, but then decided that she wanted to be a local leader. Like, so she um, began a campaign to, I think it was a, it, just a local sort of community leader, but then she became elected to that position. And so now she is able to influence higher up leaders, right? Yeah. I think that's just so cool. Like. That you you can start at this point and then feel that change and then be encouraged to go and do more change. Yeah, I think that's great. And I would love to hear if anyone watching this is inspired or desires to be a leader in their community. Yeah. Um, or if you say, you know what, I'm disillusioned. I don't think I think everyone's yeah. corrupt and. If you're if you have a bad attitude towards the leaders in your community, let us know in the comments below. Say, yeah. you know what? I want to be a leader and uh, and a good example and a and... good exa a good leader. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I hope yeah. you're I hope that's what you want to do. Um, we yeah. would love if you would uh, like and subscribe that mm -hmm. it, it really helps us out. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and um, YouTube and Instagram, YouTube and Instagram. Uh, our website and wherever is, you find a podcast. Oh, of course. Check us out there. Um, and I want to 
throw in a quick um, plug Please. for our membership as well. Oh, so yes, we haven't told learn, you about that. Go ahead. Yeah, if you want to learn more about becoming a member, if you're on YouTube right now, you can click um, right under this video where it says join, and you can learn more about what becoming a member uh, will get you and how it supports us because becoming a member makes it easier for us to make videos like this. It makes it easier for us to have conversations with you and to see what you really think. And um, yeah, we really appreciate your support as a member. That's great. And um, trying to, I feel like there's something else, but. I don't think there is. I don't think there is. So until next time, until we can talk to you again, just remember to listen, watch, practice, and learn. Spotlight out.